Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, we're going to create a Halloween inspired mandala. Now it's really fun and the centerpiece is a stitched spider. It's a little whimsical, a little spooky depending on how you want to make it, but it's definitely very fun. We'll start by making different rows of stitches in concentric circles around our piece. And I alternate between stitches and fabrics. Now you can make lots of fabric rows, you can make lots of stitched rows, you can use them exclusively or combined like I do. And it's just a fun effect. The concentric circles is a classic pattern and it's really simple and beautiful. You don't have to worry about making it pristine. You can make the fabrics and the colors really shine through here. You don't really have to worry about the shape. But if you're somebody who likes precision, then make your shapes exactly as you like them. So let's get started. So to make our Halloween inspired mandala, I have a piece of quilted fabric. That's going to be my book page here. So I have that cut to size. You can use any size you want and just modify this project accordingly. And then I choose my colors and my design fabric and it gets really fun and it can be time consuming. I want to make two fabric circles. The remaining circles I'll make from thread. And so I just chose black. I just thought that was an appropriate color. So from here I use the very scientific process of just eyeballing a circle. Now you could just trace your circle onto your fabric. It doesn't even have to be a perfect circle. You can use the process that I use where I find a bunch of candle caps in various circle sizes that I save and I trace around it just as I've done here to make my circle and then I'll cut that circle out. So I'll just go around that circle and again I'm not looking for a perfect circle. I really like the way the imperfect looks. Now, because I don't want to put that circle down just as it is, I want to make it hollow. So again, I'll go through my stash of circles here and find the lid that I want to make just the outline of the circle. If you want to be a little more precise, you can use a template. Either way, you just want to create a circle within a circle and you want to cut out that circle so I just create my line and again it's not perfectly centered it's okay I'll fold it in half just matching up the half I can even fold it in quarters to match it up those lines and then I'm just going to very carefully cut those lines and I have a circle that's good enough for my project I did a second one with smaller fabric, just made a smaller circle. And I think I'm gonna even trim this down a little further. So again, I'll just fold it accordingly so it lines up nicely. And because I already cut that center, it's not gonna line up perfectly, but good enough works. And I'll just trim that outer side just like that. You can trim up any rough edges as well but I'm not terribly concerned. I'm really just going for an appropriate size to go with my circle. And over here, this edge is a little too much for me. So I'll just trim that down, smoothing it out. Again, I'm not looking for perfection. So that's pretty nice. I can figure out how I want my circles to go later but right now I know that I have just enough room to stitch inside that circle. And that's the look I'm going for. I want to stitch outside the circle, inside the circle, and then in the center here. But for the center, I'm going to stitch a spider as a focal point. If you don't want to do that, you can always just use another idea, like maybe a button or something like that, and you get a different effect, but it's still very valuable. Now I chose black fabric. You can choose Halloween fabric just as easily. I'm going to use my Halloween colors and then my spider in the center. So it's not full on Halloween, but it certainly is very fun. So the first thing I want to do is stitch down these circles because from there I can build out accordingly. So I'm going to take my black thread and stitch around it. I can stitch through it. I can do a couching stitch. 
think I'm going to do a couching stitch because I like the way that looks and it adds a little texture. So I'll do that to both of the circles. And then we'll come back and start embellishing it with our threads and then eventually making our center spider. So I did the couching stitch all the way around both of the circles, so they're quite intact. You can just see a little faint black line. I'm considering adding additional colors, but I think I'll stitch my other stitches first and see if I want to enhance it with some additional stitches. So now I want to start from the outside and work my way into the center of the mandala. So the first thing I'm going to do is stitch a line around it, creating another circle. So I'll create a circle here. I'll just sketch it very briefly and very quickly with just this heat erasable pen. So I can take an iron and erase any marks that remain. And these are just my guides. As you can see, it's not perfect, but I'm just kind of following the border of that larger circle and just trying to match it up. So now what I'd like to do is create a stitch all the way around, but I'm going to use two colors to do that. I'm going to start with this deeper orange here, and then I'll use the other orange just to enhance it. They're just very good Halloween colors. So I'll start up top, and I think I'll do three stitches of this color, and then skip a spot for two stitches of the other color, these are just straight stitches. Of course, you're welcome to use any stitch you'd like, and that's how you personalize it. So I have my three stitches, and then I'm going to skip well, maybe a little more than half an inch, just enough to create two stitches in there, and I'll create three more stitches. And I'll do this all the way around the circle so it creates another ring to the mandala. And it's a very pretty effect. I'm doing this to create more texture and to introduce colors into these rings. The center is going to be a black spider, although I could always color it any color I wanted. But I just think having the colors alternating with the black fabric circles is an interesting way to add collage to my mandala. And in being inspired by Halloween, that's kind of fun because I can really choose those colors. Now, if you don't want to create a straight stitch, you want to use a chain stitch or another stitch, go right ahead. I'm going to be using different stitches as I work my way in. So I'll do another three here, and then I'll show you how it looks when it has all of the outer circle completed with this pattern of three stitches. So now I've stitched all around with that beautiful color here, this kind of corally orange. And now I want to go in there with my orange thread and stitch two small stitches in between each of these patterns of three stitches. So the stitches will be a little bit smaller, but they'll start to produce an interesting border right around here, which creates an additional ring on our mandala. So I'll stitch all the way around show you how it looks, and then we'll assess it and see if I want to add another row of stitching in between these two rings. So I finished stitching all the way around, and this is how it looks on the back. And you can see all the circles coming together. What I want to do, though, is I want to add another circle between the stitch circle and this circle here. I just think there's a little too much room. So once again, I'll take my pen and just create the line to follow with my stitches. This will all come off with a hot iron when I'm done. And I'm just going to continue with this straight stitch all the way around here. And then I'm going to start stitching inside here. So I'm going to use this brown color. I just think it's a great fall color. And then I'll start my stitches inside here. So I'll create my stitches, and then come back, and we'll start working the stitches inside the mandala. So now I have my two stitched circles on the outside of the mandala. I want to work my way in, and I want to stitch inside here, just in between these two circles. So you can see on the back, my mandala is coming along. So I'm going to kind of sketch that line yet again with this pen, and this time I think I'm going to do a chain stitch. So I'll just make that sketch, 
approximately halfway in between both circles. And it, since it's not perfect, there are some areas where it's closer than others, but that's okay. I'll make this work. And now I'll start my chain stitch. Now, if you've noticed here, my circle is a little off center. And that's because when I want to bind it in my book, I need some area to bind it with. So this will be covered by the spine being stitched together. So it'll just show this way. So I'm going to take this green thread. Originally, I thought I would take purple, but I think the green would look nice, especially with that brown. And I'll create my chain stitch. You can start anywhere. I'm going to start right over here just at the nine o'clock mark. What I do is I create a loop and I go down right next to where I brought it in and decide the length of my chain. The length of my stitch will be the length of the chain stitch. And so then I pull up the stitch and catch it on the loop. And I don't wanna catch it terribly tight. If I catch it tight, it'll make a thinner chain. And I like the way that looks, that depth and width. So then I stitch it down from here, I'll come back up again. Create another loop coming down right here by where I stitched it. Again, trying to make the similar size stitch, catching that loop. And now I can either go down or I can just double down here and create that next chain. And that's more efficient than the first stitch, but if I really wanted to anchor it, I could make the multiple stitches. So again, I have my chain, pulling it just as snug as I need it to be, creating that other loop and going down right next to where I created that stitch inside that loop and coming out here. And again, I'm catching that chain. I'll do the same thing all the way around, I'm trying to keep my stitches approximately the same length and the same tension, which creates the width. So I'll go all the way around and show you how I finish off that last stitch. So now I'm nearing the end of this chain stitch in the circular pattern. Now, if you find yourself running out of thread, it's the same procedure. You make your last loop, you come up, and in this case, because I'm ending it, I'm coming up right at the base of that first stitch. But if there was no stitch there, you just come up the length of your stitch that you want and stitch down. And then when you start up again, you just start up in that same area where you ended. So I'll just create a little knot on the back and then we can sketch out our spider and start the spider. So again, because this page has a direction, I want to choose the way I want the spider to hang. It doesn't matter, I can even just leave the spider smack dab in the center, but I kind of want it to hang down. I want it to look like it's coming off a web. So I'm just going to create a little hanging area here for the spider. Then I want to make my spider. So I'll create a small little area for the head and then a larger area for the body. Now spiders come in different shapes and sizes, so you can make a rounded body or you can make one with a kind of a point at the end, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm making my head just about a quarter of the size of the body, but so there are different spiders that have equal size bodies and heads. It's up to you. And then I want my legs to happen and I need eight legs. So I like to have a little joint in the legs here. Spiders have more than one joint, but I'm just going to create that one joint. And then you can decide where you want your legs, what direction you want your legs to go in. I kind of like them to create it their own little circle by the perimeter of the spider. So to stitch it, the first thing I like to do is stitch the actual body and head first. So I'll come in here and I'll stitch around that spider body here with just a little back stitch. So I stitch one stitch and then following that contour of that shape, I'll match the stitches. So they create that line. And then you can decide 
how you want to fill in your spider unless of course you want to just do a silhouette like the perimeter but I like to fill it in I think it gives it a little more body and a little more character but the first stage is to fill in with back stitches that entire spider you could also use a stem stitch or a split stitch you just want to fill in that shape of that body so I'm coming all the way around And then I'll match it right at the point. So there's the shape of my body. From there, I'm going to come in and I'm going to start creating a satin stitch. So I'll come right over the edge of that shape and make a straight stitch across. And then I'm going to come back down very close to where I made my first stitch and fill in those stitches making parallel stitches so you won't be able to see any of the background inside the body here create my last stitch on the body on the tail area and then I'm going to move my stitches over here just to fill in that body just see if I have any knots and I want to make sure all those stitches fill in so I don't see the fabric of that body now I'm making the spider black I think that's a little more ominous and a little more Halloweenish but you can certainly make it any color you want you can make it very whimsical and make maybe a purple spider or a yellow one anything you want you can even go full-on Spider-Man and make a red and blue spider. But right now I'm working on just filling in that entire body with this straight stitch. So all of the stitches, even if I have to go back to fill it in, I want them all to be parallel to one another. And I have one or two more stitches remaining. Now if you want a nice small flush satin stitch you would take your thread apart I'm using all six strands here but that's up to you the fewer strands embroidery floss you use will produce a flatter and almost nicer effect just much more smoother but I like this chunky look now for the head because it's considerably smaller I'm not going to stitch the outline I'm just going to jump to filling in the shape I have my sketch down so I'll just take my time and make sure I create that head shape, that small little circle. I want to fill all that in. If there are any areas where there's a little bit of fabric exposed, I'll just go in there. I'll just go in there and add another stitch. But I'm quite pleased with that. So now I'm going to start here on this front leg and I'm just going to create a straight stitch for each of the joints. I'm going to come right to the body and pull out that stitch to match it up to that first joint because I don't want there to be any space in between the stitch and the fabric. And I'll come over here and create the remaining legs and stitches. Because this is such a longer leg, I'll split the stitch going halfway through from the leg to the joint here and because it didn't match up perfectly I'm going to stitch right from the joint right from the front of the leg to the joint I want the legs to look like they're each leg to look like they're one leg not made up of so many stitches and so I'll take my time and complete all the legs as well as a little dangling web here. 
So now's a good time to reevaluate my piece. And I'm really liking the way this is coming out. I do feel that it needs a color in here in between the black spider and the black ring, and perhaps even some colors around the ring, maybe some additional couching stitches with some of these colors. So what do you think? I think I'm gonna add a purple ring around here, and then maybe some purple and orange inside. So that's the beauty of slow stitching. You continue to add stitches because you want to, you're enjoying the process, you're enjoying the result. I'll add some more stitches and then come back and show you the work. So I added some more stitches around this couching area and this purple line here. I just like the way the stitching look. So that's the whole point of the slow stitching is you take it as far as you want to go. I could still even add more colors in here if I wanted and I might do that at some point. But now before I finish, I wanna remove any of that ink mark so I'm taking a hot iron here and just pressing it right down over any of the area that I sketched out. And the purpose is just to remove that ink just so it looks nice and clean and crisp. And so there's our mandala. So that's how I create my Halloween inspired mandala. You don't have to stitch a spider in the center. Maybe you have a piece of fussy cut fabric that you wanna use, or you have a piece of fabric in the background that you wanna shine through. Well, that's your choice, and it'll make your result really personal. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.